On June 16th of 1968, three astronauts were sealed inside an Apollo command module and then sat in a vacuum chamber for a full seven days. Whew, we are talking about the two TV one test, AKA the most boring test ever today on Vintage Space. So this wasn't just some weirdo psychological testing to see what would happen to three men when locked in isolation for seven days in anticipation of a two week long mission to the moon. No, vacuum chamber testing was actually vital for Apollo's success. We all know space is hard, but when we say that, we usually think of the human element. That is, the fact that everything in space is trying to kill astronauts, namely the vacuum, the lack of oxygen, and the extreme temperatures. But all of those things are equally rough on the hardware and the physical spacecraft that has to keep the astronauts alive on a mission. In the early 1960s, NASA started using vacuum chambers to nearly replicate the space environment to test spacecraft and systems before launching them into space. These vacuum chambers, like the name suggests, can simulate the near vacuum of space, and they can also be made extremely cold to simulate how cold space is, or extremely hot to simulate unfiltered sunlight. Now, this is all well and good for the mechanical side of things, but leading into Apollo, NASA wanted to start doing the same test with human occupants. Namely, the agency needed to make sure that the spacecraft could keep its human occupants alive in the extreme environment of space. This need begat the Space Environment Simulation Laboratory. As originally conceived, it consisted of four chambers that could be used to test various parts of the spacecraft and various systems in a vacuum in space-like conditions, with one chamber, Chamber A, being able to take the entire Apollo Command and Service Module for a manned simulated mission to the moon. Preliminary studies determined that Chamber A, the one for the manned testing, would be an upright cylinder. It would be 75 feet in diameter with 97 foot tall straight sides, a hemispherical top, an ellipsoidal bottom, and a 45 foot tall door on one side. The whole thing would be made of stainless steel clad carbon steel with carbon steel stiffeners. Construction began in May of 1963, and a year later it went through the first depressurization tests, and they revealed some structural problems. The door buckled in, and the resulting forces actually warped the entire structure, necessitating a fair bit of refurbishment before it could actually be used. Chamber A was eventually completed and carbon arc based solar simulation units installed by mid-1966, and it was ready for testing. The first test used earlier Block 1 Apollo command modules and did reveal a fair number of problems in the spacecraft, which was great because it was better to find out these problems on the ground with a test crew of engineers inside than to find out problems in space. Of course, the Block 1 never flew. This was the spacecraft model that ultimately claimed the lives of the Apollo 1 astronauts, which meant that only later Block 2 models of the Apollo spacecraft would fly. After the Apollo 1 fired, there were some modifications made to Chamber A, but ultimately it was still ready for testing with a Block 2 Apollo spacecraft. That Block 2 Apollo spacecraft, the 2 TV-1 spacecraft, was installed in Chamber A on April 23rd of 1968. And on June 16th of that year, astronauts Vance Brand, Joe Engel, and Joe Kerwin climbed aboard and began their 188-hour, 31-minute mission simulation. Because this was before any Apollo mission, the spacecraft was modeled after Apollo 7 and made to go through roughly an Earth orbit simulation mission. There were both hot soaks and cold soaks to simulate the spacecraft being in the direct sunlight and also in the Earth's shadow, and the crew just had to live off the air, food, and amenities they had on board the spacecraft for a full seven days. And it wasn't perfect. There were problems, notably with the urine dump system, which meant for seven days the crew had to store their urine in bags. Not to mention, they didn't exactly have zero gravity, and most Apollo astronauts recount in their memoirs that as small as the spacecraft was, it was livable because of zero gravity. When you could float up to the ceiling, you had so much more space. This mission was ultimately quite successful. The Apollo 7 simulation led to 12 hardware design changes and 13 crew procedure changes in the Apollo Block 2 spacecraft. And best of all, it proved that there was nothing technologically stopping NASA from launching the first Apollo mission in the Block 2 spacecraft. Apollo 7 flew a very successful Earth orbital mission in October of 1968, ultimately clearing NASA to take Apollo to the moon. So what do you guys think about a seven day earthbound vacuum chamber test with humans involved? Can you imagine anything potentially more boring? Let me know your thoughts below. And if you would like to know more about chamber A and vacuum testing, I've got loads more details over on my latest blog post at Popular Science. So be sure to check that out.
Leave me all of your spacey questions and just general thoughts in the comment section below. Be sure to follow me on Twitter and Instagram for daily vintage space content. And with new videos going up every single week, subscribe right here so you never miss an episode.